So as Nero was saying, we're seeing so much uncertainty over these trade tensions between the U.S. and China. I do wonder how is that affecting your customers' view and investment uh, plans ahead, and how is that affecting your business? Well, that is the way we look at it. We look at it through the lens of our customers. In the China markets, we are, you know, we are viewing our customers. Where are they going with their demand? Where do they see their changes? And there's been a lot of discussion. Do supply chains move as trade and tariff? negotiations go forward, will you see supply chains move, customers move production? We haven't seen that. We continue to serve our customers in China with their plans here. Uh, we are, 70% of our revenue is designed in or specified in our customers' bill of materials or their processes they use. That tends to be very you know, long cycle uh, demand from them, and, that, and that's staying here in China. One of the most difficult markets for you, though, was China specifically, right? So what made it so difficult for you to sort of gauge customer demand here? It was really, we saw a softness in two end markets in China, and they ha happened to be very important here and large for 3M. It was the automotive industry, and we saw a decline in demand. The, the build rate of automobiles in China actually globally slowed down. China significantly, and it declined as we came into 2019, and it's been staying soft all year. At the same time, electronics softened as well. And so between China, electronics, automotive globally, it's about 30% of our revenue that we saw slowing, and we had to make adjustments in our plans as, as we went through the middle and to the latter part of the year. Is it particularly difficult to gauge demand in the Chinese market specifically than in any other place that you're in? Well, we get very clear demand from our OEM customers, the end specifiers of our solutions. So the automobile uh, you know, makes and models, the electronic OEMs, they're very clear about their demand. In between us is a channel, and that is something that has to adjust to changes in demand. We saw that in the first half of the year, that added to the decline, where build rates might have been down mid single digits, and maybe a little higher at times. The channel took out inventory, so we saw even double digit decline in automotive for a time. What are you seeing going forward? Will you see this demand, especially the automotive part, come back, say, next year? Well, we see inflections first. We see downturns early. We tend to lead out as well. And so many economists even ask us, what are you seeing? Do you see anything changing? And as we've come through the second half of 2019, it's been pretty steady. As we came out of our earnings call in Q3, we, we told everybody we see Q4 much like Q3. We haven't seen the inflection up yet. There's hope and optimism that things will get better, but we haven't seen that yet in the marketplace. You've had to revise down your guidance, right? Do you wish you had been more conservative when you had put those guidance forward? Well, we thought we were. We came into the year knowing electronics and automotive would be soft. And as we came through the second half of Q1, it changed dramatically. And it is, you, you can be more conservative, but that has so impact too. what do you think led to that change? Well, the marketplace saw softer consumer demand in both electronics and automotive. And it was global, it was also you know in the China market, but that changed, it slowed down and then the the inventory and everything else had to adjust. We had to adjust. Mm -hmm. And you, we, one of the things that we have is a strength of, of reacting quickly. We can react within a cycle, about 90 days for us. It was difficult to react in half of a quarter, but by the time we got into second quarter, we realigned ourselves to the changes in the marketplace, and we've been delivering strong execution, operational performance, uh, even in a slower growth market. And you were doing a lot of cost cutting as well. We did. We had to realign our costs, everything from operations to the investments we were planning on larger growth around the world. We just pulled back on those. And, and I think that's part of our model to realign to the marketplace, and we did that fairly quickly. But you still have gone through with these massive acquisitions, say the medical tech company, Acelity as well. Some have pushed back on those cost synergies. What do you say to them? Well, first of all, we continue to invest for the future. We are not going to, in fact, that's one of the strengths of coming out of slowdowns is we keep investing for the future organically. And when we see the opportunities to really take advantage of acquisitions that can leverage the 3M synergies, the thing that makes our company greater than the sum of our individual parts, we will make those acquisitions as well. And Acelity, the largest acquisition we made to date, it happened to fall right in second quarter after mm -hmm. we had come out uh, with a slowdown in those markets, but it was really the right strategy, takes advantage of 3M technologies, takes advantage of our global position, 
and it will be a very strong platform for growth. Is everything that you're saying right now meaning that you're still looking at more acquisitions ahead in organic growth? It, this being the largest acquisition, it takes a lot of our focus and we are putting a priority on that. Doing another large acquisition in the near term, less likely, but we continue to make key strategic acquisitions. We had made one right before we announced uh, Celity, a company called M-Modal in the digital space in our health information systems business. A billion business. dollar deal, right? Yeah, a billion dollar deal, which has been in line with some of the acquisitions we've made in recent years. Celity does focus us on a priority. These days, when it comes to these big industrial giants, it's all divesting or spinning off. Uh, do you feel the pressure to simplify? Well, we, are, we have one big idea that drives 3M. It's our model centered on our technologies, and we take our technologies and combine multiple technologies to solve customer problems in unique ways. That's why we end up specified and designed in at, at our customers. They're unique value propositions for our customers. And we end up in many markets because you can see opportunities for our technology platforms, largely material science, in markets from industrial to electronics, transportation, consumer, healthcare. We end up, and we look like a diversified conglomerate from a market perspective. Even our portfolio is very broad. But it's that, that one 3M model that really is at the heart of it. And if we don't deliver synergies off of that, if we don't have differentiated value, it's up to us to manage our portfolio around that. We have made divestitures when parts of our business become disconnected from those synergies. We make acquisitions when they're well connected to those synergies. Other than that, the priority is continue to invest organically. Does that mean that basically you're bound by this big unit, so you don't really see it being broken off? Well, you would have dissynergies. If you pull apart those pieces that benefit from not just our technology platforms, but our manufacturing technologies. Right. We have a lot of intellectual property in our manufacturing, our global capabilities to operate these different go-to-market models from healthcare to consumer to industrial. Do you see this slowdown in growth in, in industrials uh, bottoming out anytime soon? It's been more steady in the second half, and one way to see that is what's happening in the distribution channels. Are they adjusting inventory? And while they've continued to moderate a little bit, it's been less pronounced in the first half of the year, so it's more stable. It is. It still has been stable at a low growth level. And those, those, that 30% of our business that's in electronics and automotive, that's still negative build rates. And of course, you still have it hanging over 3M, the over 100 lawsuits or so across the U.S. over alleged water contamination because of your chemicals. What risks does this pose for your company and how should investors see this? Well, this legacy chemistry and, and litigation around it is very complex and we have been leading forward to it with it to try to be as transparent as we can with our investors and really all of our stakeholders. Our employees care about it and we are leading forward with a focus on 3M sustainability, trying to try to help people understand it. So I think it, it will evolve over time. Probably uh, we'll get more visibility on some of the litigation next year. In the meantime, we have taken a step forward where we manufacture to actually remediate and really step forward and solve some of the challenges. Just really quickly, do you have an idea of total liability? No, not at this time. It's too early to really have a view of that. We can give pieces of it. Uh, we have put a, a reserve in place for where we manufactured and what it will take to resolve that. But beyond that, it's too early to tell.